Hey guys, in this tutorial we're going to explore the basics of applying substances to your props in iClone 7. So I'm going to take a look at where you can find the substances, how you can apply them, and just some of the basic uh, parameters. Now on the screen right now we have two uh, similar looking cubes, however they actually are different in their makeup. The one on the left has a high polygon count, whereas the one on the right is a very simple box that you can actually find under props in 3D blocks under box 001. Now if we go to the scene manager here, and we go over here a little bit, you can see we have the box, this one right here, and box 001. Let's go into wireframe mode here by clicking this little doodad over here and bringing them both into wireframe mode. You'll notice that the geometry on the box is actually a lot more complex than the box 001. And this is going to affect the way that the substances apply to the boxes uh, when we get to that point. So just so you, just so you know uh, beforehand. All right, so we're going to just go ahead and take these back to normal shading. And I'm going to show you what I mean. So to find the substances that are embedded with iClone 7, you need to go to your content manager and under media, you'll find the materials right here. And under materials, you'll find a folder called substance. Now I've also installed a separate uh, uh, content pack from the content store called Substance Power 200 that you can check out on your own time. Lots of stuff like uh, architecture, different types of grounds. There's a whole variety of stuff um, that you can explore. Uh, we'll provide a link for this in the description so you can check it out on your own time. But I'm just going to go ahead and use the substances found in the default embedded iClone. All right, and the first thing I'm going to apply is a metal. So I'm going to go down to my metals here, and I'm going to apply this metal plate 004. I'm just going to click and drag it onto my screen. You can also just double click it if you have your object selected. Okay, just like that. And you can see it applies nicely. We have this metallic looking uh, crate with some uh, lines on it. All right, uh, some divots or whatever you want to call them. All right, and then I'm going to go ahead and apply the same uh, material, PBR material, to my other cube. And notice that the application doesn't look good at all. And this is partially because of the simple geometry, and it's also because it's a cube as well. So the cube shape actually uh, affects this as well. Now, if we want to uh, apply this in the correct way, we can go over here to materials, and under materials, at the very bottom, you'll find a UV settings uh, section right here. Uh, what you want to do is you want to select box since we are applying it to a box, a cube shape right here. And we'll align it to the Z axis, which is the up and down. If I press the W hotkey, I'll bring my gizmo up. You can see the up and down blue arrow. That's the uh, Z axis. I press Q to get rid of that. And I can just go ahead and select apply. And now when I select apply, you can see, boom, we have the exact same application. And uh, everything is looking a lot better. So if you come across that situation where you're applying a substance to simple geometry, there's a quick way to fix it using the UV settings. Uh, there's spherical and cylindrical and everything like that as well, but we won't get into that in uh, this tutorial. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and delete that cube right now since we're going to focus on this one. And let's take a look at where you can find the parameters to modify for your substance. Okay, so what I'm going to do is go over here to materials again. And at the top, you will see that we have all these materials, all these uh, texture maps under here and under texture settings. Now keep in mind as well that these are all PBR, uh, PBR materials. You can see the PBR on the bottom right corner there. And the bottom left, uh, there's a little flame that indicates it's a substance material, okay? So you can modify all these values, uh, these texture maps up here with your basic stuff like strength. If you want to you know, get rid of the texture, base color a little bit more, you can use the strength and uh, all kinds of stuff like that. You can do the same thing with the AO and metallic and everything. We're not going to go into that too, in too much detail. We're going to focus mostly on the substance parameters, which can be found in this section. You can also press the M hotkey to get a hot, uh, to get a shortcut there. You can see the substance that's loaded up is this metal plate 004.spsar. Right now this graph we're selecting is the metal plate 004. You can also change the output size from 512 to uh, any of these uh, dimensions right here, 1024 or 2048. The dimension that I like to use for general computers with, you know, fairly decent video cards, I'd recommend using uh, 1024. If you choose 2048, your performance may lag a bit. Just keep that in mind, okay? And you can see all the channels here that are being affected, the base color, normal, roughness, metallic, ambient occlusion, and height, corresponding to these channels up here, okay? And I'm just going to go ahead and twirl the channels up now. And then there's basic parameters. So your basic parameters are stuff like luminosity. If you wanted to have a darker metal, you can uh, decrease luminosity. Uh, you can also increase the contrast and get like a much more uh, you know, dark looking cube like this. A hue shift will change the color. You can see there's a slight effect. We'll probably want to increase the luminosity a bit there. A the hue shift, you can see the color uh, of the paint right there. We'll talk about the paint a little bit later. Uh, there's saturation. You can oversaturate or de desaturate, everything like this. 
Um, and then there's normal intensity. So normal intensity will kind of increase or decrease the feeling of depth uh, from the bump map. This is kind of like uh, adjusting the strength on your bump map right here. Okay, and um, then there's AO spreading, height range. Now for height range, what you want to do, pay attention to the right corner here of our cube. If I increase my height range, notice we'll get a bit more uh, geometry or a bit more of a curvature along the edge. So generally what you want to do uh, with materials like this is increase the height range so you have a bit more to work with uh, with the appearance of actual uh, shapes and bumpiness on the outside of your surface. I generally max this out and you can also change the height position. That's not going to do much though. Uh, you want to keep that in the middle if your height range is at, uh, whoops, let's put in 0 0.5 here. Okay, so that's how you can uh, work around with all these basic parameters. What I like to do first though is I like to go mostly into the advanced parameters first. Now the advanced parameters are the parameters that are exclusive to your particular substance. Now this metal, metal plate 004 has a different number of pattern. You can change the pattern amount. You can have more uh, ribs on the uh, crate just like this. You can increase the amount of rust. Okay, I'm actually going to go ahead and Luminosity is a little bit too low. Okay, I think we're okay. And uh, anyways, so the rust, you can increase or decrease the amount of rust. If you have zero rust, it's very, it'll be a very shiny, very new uh, type of uh, crate here. However, uh, we do have paint. Paint peeling, if I maximize the paint peeling, you can see that uh, there will be no paint on our crate. We have a simple metallic crate, just like this. Okay, now if I uh, take the paint peeling all the way down, we'll have a much more matte-like surface with... Uh, Crate, metal crate covered in paint. Uh, what I'm going to do for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm just going to decrease the pe uh, paint peeling all the way. I'm going to add a little bit of rust in there. Okay, just a tiny bit, just like this. Uh, very minimal amount of rust. I probably want to go back and change the hue a little bit. 0 0.5. There we go. And uh, okay, put this up a little bit. Okay, and then uh, what here I'm going to do now is there's rust drips as well. You can see the amount of uh, uh, rust drips. It can be very concentrated, or you can have the rust kind of dripping along the uh, along the ribs there. There's also a cool one on this particular metal. You can uh, have some bullet holes in it. So if I pump up the amount of uh, bullet holes, a uh, bullet impact amount, you can see we get some bullet holes in there, just like this. Uh, maybe it's been in a war zone or something. You can change the impact size of the bullet holes as well, so make them larger or smaller, just like this. And there's also the cracks, which kind of basically blend in the surface area around it a bit more. You can see the result right there. Now here what you can do is you can change the uh, paint color, rest color, and the metal color. Um, what I want to do here is take the metal roughness uh, down a little bit. You can see we'll get a much more metallic surface. Now if I press my forward slash key, I can use my uh, light, my main scene light here, to see the reflection, metallic reflection of the light. Okay, So that's a little bit better. If you want to emphasize this a bit more, you can also go to your visual tab here. And by default, the iClone scene will have IBL on. Now you can decrease the amount of strength in your IBL, just like this. Okay, so it's a very, very minimal ambient light. And then you can go to your scene manager and find your key light. And you can increase the multiplier value to something like uh, 1.5 or 2. And then once you do that, your multiplier key light right here, press the forward slash key, and you'll see much stronger results on the, on the metal. Okay, so you get some strong reflections and then again we can go to the materials and uh, in the advanced parameters here uh, take the metal roughness down even further and you'll see a much more metallic surface particularly on this uh, side here where our rim light is affecting okay so you get something like this and there you'll see the light affecting it a lot more so if you have a, a very low roughness value you'll see a, a result like this okay and aside from that, like I mentioned, there's the paint color. You can change the paint color. You can change the rust color if you want, or the metal color to something a little bit different. Um, I, just, I like to kind of keep this the way it is. I'm going to add a bit more rust on here as well, though. All right, and uh, maybe just uh, change our output size. We can change that to 2048 by 2048 now. And that'll just give us a bit of a high resolution, okay? Now, if you go to like 512 by 512, notice that it's, uh, it's very basic. Um, if I take the pattern amount down a little bit, you can probably notice it a bit more. So 512 compared to uh, 2048. So you get a much different result here uh, as far as the texture goes. You can probably pump that roughness up a little bit. All right. Uh, I kind of keep it at 1024 just for editing purposes, though. Okay, so that's uh, your basic uh, parameters you can modify for the metallic surface. 
What I'm going to do now is I'm going to apply a custom stone material and the same content manager under uh, substance. I'm going to go down and find a stone material. So again, just click and drag it onto my cube right here. Now the stone is pretty cool. Uh, I like to use the stone and the reason for that is because uh, uh, advanced parameters, there's, there's different sizes of rocks. So if you take the rock size down, take the rock edges down and the rock amount down, you'll have a basic kind of like a stucco, almost like a stucco surface, which I think is pretty cool. And in basic parameters here, you can uh, uh, change that height range as well. It uh, doesn't have much of a result on this one, but uh, you can see the nice um, granite surface we can achieve. Um, now, I'm going to go back to my advanced parameters here. And if you have more detail or less detail, uh, you can't really see it when this when it's like a stucco amount like this. But we need to add some rocks onto there. So I'm going to actually continue to uh, add some rocks to cover up our granite surface there. Okay. And the rock edges, you can make them smoother like this or more jagged. And you can change the size of the rocks. All right, so you can reveal some of the granite below. So this is a very useful uh, substance for, you know, ground uh, in basically any sort of scenario. And then if I zoom in a little bit closer on the rock surface, now you can see the detail. Okay, so there you go. Just like that, you can decrease or increase the amount of detail uh, on the rock surface. You can change the rock color as well. If I wanted to uh, have a little bit of a darker uh, surface on the rock, you can do so just like this. And then the back color, which is the granite surface, like I mentioned, you can change that to a bit of a lighter color. There you go. And we get a bit more contrast. And to add to that contrast, we can, of course, go to basic parameters and then increase the amount of contrast. Okay. So that looks a little bit overdone. You can fade it out or you can increase the amount of contrast. You decrease the luminosity slightly. And you get a nice uh, darker stone like this. Uh, much more interesting contrast, almost like there's a sort of powdered uh, mold or something in between the cracks of the rocks there. And then again, I would probably want to change that to 1024. And we get a nice, much more detailed uh, rocky surface, just like this. Okay, so that's, uh, you know, you can mess around with this on your own time. Um, AO spreading is a good one for this one. You can kind of notice it on the edges of the rocks there increase or decrease the AO spreading, just a little bit of addition to the uh, the edges, uh, the shadowing along the edges there and the normal intensity. And this one can be very effective as well. So if you increase the normal intensity to like three quarters, I think that looks kind of interesting. Maybe we want to tone down that back color a little bit just to decrease the amount of contrast slightly. There you go. Okay. And then we have a very interesting looking rock surface. And again, this is totally random. You can uh, adjust the amount of rocks and the rock edges and the shape shift as well. You can modify the, randomize the uh, pattern of the rock as well, which is pretty cool. Okay, so let's move on to our last example here, which is a wood example. So I'm going to go down to the very bottom here, and we have a couple of wood examples. I like this American cherry here. I'm just going to apply this really quick and show you. This is really good for like, uh, you know, teak furniture, dining room furniture, or something like that. Uh, let's change it to 1024 again. Advanced parameters, really simple for this one. Just a couple extra knots there. You can see them appear in the in the wood. Uh, the fibers, not really a huge effect on this one. Um, but the wood roughness, you can really notice. If I decrease the wood and roughness, we get a much more lacquered appearance uh, right here. We can rotate it around and see the reflection of the light off of it. So, uh, how, uh, whereas if we increase the wood roughness, it's much more, you know, uh, solid with a more uh, more of a brushed. Uh, look as, as opposed to lacquered. Okay, so that's just one example here. Now this other wood ash has kind of a, a unique uh, texture as well. With this one, again, I'm just going to switch to 1024 here. With this one, you can go into advanced parameters, and this one has an aging parameter. So if you age this one, you can see it you get a nice kind of age result like this. Um, variations, um, you know, in the colors, you'll notice that there's stronger variations, almost like stronger contrast between the lighter and the darker areas. If you increase that variation, or as it dulls out if you decrease it. And then there's also weathering. The weathering has a fairly strong effect on this one. So you can see we can make it a nice rotting type of wood here. Now, this one has another cool option here called battens, where you can kind of create sort of a hardwood floor. So let's actually uh, decrease the amount of uh, weathering on this one. We're going to create a nice, relatively uh, decent looking hardwood floor. We'll leave a little bit of weathering on there. Okay, just something like this. We don't want it to be too perfect. Okay, I'll just keep it like this. And so you can change the amount of uh, battens, like uh, kind of tiles, hardwood flooring tiles. 
on the ground there. So you can increase the amount on the x-axis, increase or decrease the amount on the y-axis. Let's create a nice wide plank, uh, you know, floor, hardwood floor here. And the batten's chamfer here. Uh, you probably want to keep that fairly close to around the 10% mark there. Otherwise, you'll get a very faded and kind of weird looking appearance. If you want a, like a bumpy kind of tile, that's okay, but uh, I tend to keep it around uh, 0 0.1. And then there's, you can add gaps between the battens as well, just like this. Uh, I don't really want any gaps, so uh, I'm actually going to just adjust the wood color to something a little bit darker here as well, just so we can see a bit more contrast. Oops. You can see when we do that, the weathering uh, is has a very strong effect, as well as the age and variations there. So uh, you probably want to adjust the color variation a little bit. And we can go into our uh, basic parameters here and then uh, change the hue as well. Something like this. We'll keep it at the original and maybe decrease the luminosity. So now we have a dark, like kind of oak. I'm not sure what kind of a dark, uh, what kind of wood has a very dark appearance like this, but uh, you can increase the contrast and get something like this as well and increase that normal intensity. You can get some really uh, detailed results on that uh, on that wood tile. Let's go back to the advanced parameters here. And there's a random offset as well to kind of avoid, you know, any sort of tiled look or uh, repeated look. And the height variation as well, you can adjust that. Now with the height variation, you can see a couple of tiles coming in and out. Uh, with this one, again, go back to basic parameters and your height range. You'll see the difference there just slightly. Okay, so if you increase the height range, you'll see along the edge there. There's a lot of height variation, just, just like in those areas right there. And uh, that's uh, up to you, totally up to you, the amount of height variation you want, and also color variation. So we can kind of, you can see the color variation very strongly there. All right, and then uh, here, that's an age again, and variation. And now that we adjusted that, uh, that hue and saturation, and the basic parameters, now we can get a much more interesting look for our uh, darkened hardwood floor, okay? Cool, all right, and so there you go. You can have a, like an old hardwood floor in a, in a rusty old motel or something like that. And uh, if I plus the forward slash key again, you can see the result if I move it along here. And back to uh, textures, advanced parameters. And yeah, that's basically all the parameters for this type of wood. Uh, so again, uh, there's lots of options here. In addition to that, you can also go up to your basic parameters and adjust these in various ways. But all I really wanted to show you in this uh, tutorial here is how to apply your substances and the various uh, parameters, the basic parameters that you can uh, get, take a look at in the modify panel in your material tab here. Uh, so thanks so much for watching. Hopefully you learned a lot and we'll have more substance material uh, tutorials in the future. And I'll see you in the next video.